Let's bring in market man of the morning. That will be David Barnson sitting right here in New York City. Obvious question, are we close to the bottom? Uh, nobody knows, including the people that were just quoted. The, the Morgan Stanley guys are notorious for this. I've been watching. I used to be a managing director at the firm, and they have some great market strategists. But this whole thing of calling a price is great for headlines. It's great to kind of scare just, people up. And there's nothing more bold than after a thousand point drop than deciding, hey, it looks like markets are weakening. You know, um, look, it gets you the headline, doesn't it? It gets you the headline. And, and yet at the same time, what I would say is the prudent thing to do is not guess an exact time. It's to encourage investors to have a plan for how you're going to deal with all kinds of weather. Yep. And the fact of the matter is that there is an argument markets can come lower. It could end up reversing. You go back to March 2020, the whole country is shut down. We don't know at that time what to expect with the pandemic. Yep. And yet markets reversed violently within a couple of weeks. You just don't know. People need an asset allocation, a way that they divide up their assets that accounts for all possibilities. You know, my big problem is the market goes down and stays down for a period of years, yeah. just like the 1970s. Is that a possibility? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be um, as worried about that because I still think you have robust earnings growth that you weren't getting in the 70s. That's There's true. still a lot of companies growing earnings. The problem is with the NASDAQ stuff, the tech stuff, the, the multiples, the valuations were so expensive that if they stay, if they come down to kind of a reasonable level and don't boost back higher, that could hold those down for a while. But other things in the market will then be doing well, more value oriented, I think, you know, dividend growth growers are probably going to do well in that environment. That's, I had to get that in there. No, that's what I wanted to get yeah, to. Yeah. You invest in companies which have a growing dividend, right. which is safe. Now, you brought with us today JP Morgan. That's your dividend pick. What do they pay? Well, I, I picked these two names today because they're uh, so down on the year. J.P. Morgan's paying about 3.5%. And for a big bank financial, that's very high. Remember, their dividends regulated by the Fed and so forth. But we bought J.P. Morgan in 2009, right after a financial crisis. It's up about 400% since then. So whether loan growth is down or deposits are down or investment banking, they have different parts of their business that are always struggling and others doing well. But they have such good diversity in their businesses. J.P. Morgan has destroyed destroyed their competitors since the financial crisis. Well, I like the sound of that. To yeah. destroy the company. Well, I really like the sound of that. David, stay with me okay. for the hour, please. Thanks a lot. Now, look at this. Here's an even bigger drop, and that's a snap. It's down 35%. They reported earlier this morning. What's the well, big they, issue? They warned, they warned that their growth is slowing and their earnings are going to miss their own targets. Um, and it's the shot being heard around the world. And if you show those other social media stocks like Meta and Pinterest and Twitter, they're all dropping sharply, too. Uh, this is a message on digital advertising. Worries are that that might be the first thing to go in a recession. Snap has Snap's own problems. It's a company specific story. But when it comes to digital advertising and that potentially, which is a moneymaker for stocks like Facebook and, and these other names, if that goes, well, these stocks are going to be hurt. David, nodding your head at the problems with advertising going forward. Um, I think it's significant if it becomes systemic, especially in recession. But I agree with Lauren. Snap is snap specific. That company makes less money than the hot dog vendor outside the building. <laughs> nice touch. Nice touch. All right. Uh, Zoom. What All story? over the place recently. They've, now, I know they've lost 85 percent of their value mm -hmm. since the high in October 2020. But why are they up 5 percent this morning? They raised their profit outlook. They saw margin out performance. You don't hear about that recently. And they also call online churn muted. What that means is they're not losing too many customers as we return to in real life meetings. Meetings, And you know, I think this suggests that Zoom is here to stay. It's just not going to see the 200% quarterly growth that it saw during the pandemic when we were stuck at home. It saw sales growth of 12% in the past quarter, which is good. It's slowest ever, but that's a return to normal and you're laughing. Yeah, it's just the well, revenues well. that are growing so much are small revenues. Everybody uses it. During pandemic, we all got familiar with it. We all learned to take our mute button off and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, but they don't make any money. Ah. You have to make money. Yes, you do indeed. And you can write that down. Here to stay. I mean, I, I, sure. I, mean, I know it's people a big who brand. go to the office every day and they're stuck on Zoom meetings with people at home. Yeah. That's annoying. <laughs> yes, very annoying. <laughs> if I buy Bitcoin, what have I got? What's there? Uh, well, well, so far what you have is down 57 percent, and it's supposed to be the stable replacement to the dollar. Um, I just I think people need to learn, of all things, the, this is not an antidote to the Fed. 
It was created by the Fed. It's a speculative frenzy because of low rates that put everyone in things like Zoom and Snap and crypto, where the crypto folks thought they were betting against what the central bank was doing. It's been the exact opposite. David Barnson sitting next to me. What about this transition, this incredible transition to uh, the green new world? Well, you could have an incredible transition. You could admit you need natural gas. Yep. You could, as Larry said, admit that wind, solar is not going to get it done. He said it's not going to happen overnight. He's right about that. It's also not going to happen in the next 30 years. The, the world is going to need fossils, so we need to focus on getting less carbon emitted from fossils. Natural gas do that. There's a reason we've limited right. fossil uh, carbon emissions so much. It's technology, and it's investing more in natty gas. But here's the thing. Breaking away from the dirty producers. Why do we want to be more dependent on Russia, let alone Saudi, other Middle Eastern actors? This incredible transition could be to Oklahoma and Texas, away yes. from Middle Eastern tyrants and autocrats. It could be. I own land in, nor in uh, New York State. There's enough gas underneath my land to provide gas for the whole of New York City. But you're not allowed to go get it yeah. under the rules of New York State. Incredible. It's a terrible thing. Next case. Thank uh, <clears throat> I think I understand, uh, generally speaking, what you're talking about. And I can tell that you are an enthusiast. You're a meta guy, aren't you? I'm really excited about the metaverse. I think that it's about to happen. We're at the beginning of it. There's a lot to be done. There's rules and regulations that have to be expanded. Um, there's going to be things around data privacy, data portability, and governments will have to do something about that as well. Ray, thanks very much for being with us today from Davos. We do appreciate it. But David Barnson shaking his head vigorously sitting there. You're not buying the metaverse? God made us to be in relationship with each other. We are human beings made with dignity in his image. Hey, and this idea that the metaverse is going to replace that is nonsense. Good point, good point. Thank you. Fascinating, though. Isn't it? I mean, it's fascinating. Dave, do th I do want to thank you very much for being here for the hour. You were my editor, and uh, you, you set me straight on a few things. I appreciate that. Thanks, You're a good sir. man.